This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Carl, are you, are you okay tonight or do you need time? Uh, well, it looks like you got a lot of people there. Uh, if there is, uh, yes, I could use some time. Okay. Okay. Well, if we can squeeze you in later on, we'll do it. Okay. So uh, today is what? The 14th of December, the middle of December. The year is almost over. Um, this is the, uh, yeah, I guess. Peter Monaco, mute. Yeah, having trouble with my computer right now. I don't know if you can hear me, but yeah, I, don't have, I don't have anything to add tonight. Good. But you have to mute your mic because we're getting serious feedback. I got him, uh, Len. I, I muted him. Okay, thanks, Jake. He's listed twice. He's on video and on uh, telephone. Oh, that's why. Okay, this is the uh, high risk recurrent uh, group, and um, I don't see any new names or faces tonight. Yeah. Uh, unless I'm missing somebody. Yeah, um, Cal Van Z is with us. And is he with it? Is he on? Oh, there he is. Yes. Okay, Cal, yes. you're going to get priority tonight because you we missed you last time. So uh, stand by because you're going to you're going to be up first. Okay, and, and yeah, after Ken, really just Jim Barnes, because we missed you last time, so uh, you're going to get a chance uh, at the top of the list, and um, and we we have some others that we, we want to hear from Jake and the, uh, several others. So there's a few of us uh, want to provide some updates and there's some interesting twists and turns in the journey. Um, I want to mention uh, as we have been doing that. We have two very generous sponsors, um, Bayer Pharmaceutical and Pfizer Oncology have um, backed us up as a, a, on the support group level, which is very unique uh, for pharmaceutical companies to do. And we're very appreciative for them. We're not pushing their drugs, but we are extending a, a lot of gratitude for them for their financial aid to, uh, to ANCAN for this, for this coming year. So you might hear us say that in many of our groups at the beginning, but it's, um, it's just because we, we rightly should appreciate them for their generous gift. Um, okay, uh, just quickly before, before I start with Cal, Dennis McGuire, do you have anything tonight that's, that's pressing? Hey, Peter. Yes, I have an update. Okay. And who, who else did I see? Uh, ben Nathanson, do you have anything? Hi, Peter. Nothing tonight. Yeah. Um, Larry Fish just buddy. came in. I am. Larry, do you have anything tonight? No, not tonight. Thank you. Okay. And Peter Monaco, are you good? You're good tonight? Yeah, he, he told us he was good. Okay. okay. Well, let's get rolling. So, Cal, um, we missed you last time. Um, tell us where you live and how old you are. I live in Seattle and I'm 67. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about your, were you recently diagnosed or a while ago? What, uh, yeah. Diagnosed on March 1st of 2020, last year. Um, okay. I've been having some symptoms back in December, but, um, you know, was going to work and feeling pretty good. And so I was, I had pretty severe back pain and my physical therapist uh, recommended that I that maybe I had a compression fracture, even though my primary care physician didn't think I needed an x-ray. Um, my PT kept kind of asking me to ask him. And so when I uh, wound up getting oxy from him so I could sleep, he said, okay, I'll 
I'll authorize an X-ray and came back with a T12 compression fracture and that led to an MRI. And then um, kind of before I could see an oncologist, I wound up in the emergency room uh, four days after the preliminary diagnosis uh, that I had lesions in um, uh, about four or five different thoracic vertebrae. And uh, I had urinary retention. So I was in the hospital for, in the ER for 22 hours. And that's when they did the MRI and all bunch of stuff and kind of confirmed the diagnosis at that point um, that it was metastatic prostate cancer, not um, a multiple myeloma or something else. And um, it had just, it was just crazy the, the month of March um, with all kinds of scans and biopsies and everything. And the good news was that uh, at that time, I didn't have uh, any soft tissue um, spread, um, but I, I, I did have, um, and, and I guess I still do have very extensive uh, uh, met bone lesions, um, including, you know, I mean, the first time we saw the, the scan, it was pretty unnerving to see spots in my skull. Um, but uh, the oncologist and radiologist assured me that um, it was only in my bone and they knew how to treat it. And um, so pretty much my symptoms disappeared. I got, I started treatment Thursday after I got out of the ER on Monday and my symptoms pretty much disappeared the next day. I haven't really been in pain for a year and a half. Um, and I started that first first week of March on uh, uh, Degarelix, and then a month later started with Lupron and uh, Abiraterone, which is pretty much what I've been on. Um, and my my PSA went all the way down to 0 0.3, I think, in January. But then in April, uh, three months later, it was starting to climb, and um, it's been climbing since then. And I just had a blood draw last week in preparation from talking to my oncologist tomorrow. And it's at 19.4 19 19 now. So I'm expecting a change in treatment. He's gonna talk to me, Dr. Zhao at Swedish uh, is going to talk to me about um, possible trial options. He also ordered a genetic panel, but it was, a blood test and my wife was uh, correcting me that it's it's to really diagnose how the cancer cells may have changed, which I don't completely understand how that might influence a difference in treatment or what the tr difference in treatment might be. Um, I, I was hoping to get into a PSMA uh, Latuthium uh, 217 trial but I heard last week from you all that that's been shut down. So I don't know what Dr. Zhao is gonna offer as possible trials uh, next week, but that's what I'm gonna talk, or tomorrow, that's what I'm gonna talk to him about tomorrow. Okay, so, you, well, one uh, good thing your physical therapist was on the ball. Your, your GP doesn't sound like you're, you're, you're she was. Yeah, well, yeah my, well, my, my GP and I had discussed getting um, tested and had we both kind of come to the conclusion that there were too many false positives going on at that time um, for for it to be um, useful and so yeah both of us missed it okay well anyway yeah that's it's all all too common sometimes so you have not done any a therapy at this point, correct? No, no chemo, no. Um, Dr. Zhao was going to start me on chemo in June of last year. That's when I went on medical leave at work. Um, uh, but because of the pandemic, he decided that it was too risky to do that. And, um, uh, you know, the, the Lupron and uh, Abiraterone were working. Um, I mean, I went from a PSA of 92 on March 1st of, of last year, you know, to, as I was saying, in January of 0 0.4 uh, with no symptoms. And I still don't really have any any symptoms. Um, 
I changed from prednisone to dexamethasone in May of this year. And oh my gosh, that was like a sea change for me because I had terrible insomnia before that. And now I'm sleeping great. And um, uh, I see my PT uh, very regularly. He's really built up my upper body strength. And, you know, uh, I've had an awesome year and a half. Great. Are you getting a bone strengthener drug? Uh, yes. I'm, every three months, along with the Zometa, I mean, along with the Prun, I'm getting an infusion of Zometa. Okay. And what was your PSA when you were diagnosed? 92. 92. Okay. Yeah. And and now it's now it's climbing to 19. Um, yes. I'm sure the guys, you know, probably have some comments. No. So, I'm sorry you're going through this, but at least you're in Seattle, and not in the middle of nowhere. Well, and you know, I I can't complain. I symptoms. I mean, it's it's scary because I don't know where it's spreading to. I certainly don't want it to spread soft tissue, but I don't really have any pain. Okay. How about, how about the urinary retention? Did that clear up? Yeah, I haven't had any problem at all with that. I mean, I had a catheter for a month, and I really had to argue hard with the urologist to get rid of it. Um, but I haven't, except for the week after it was removed, um, uh, I had some issues. But uh, since then, I really haven't, I really haven't had any problems at all. And I, I was just in Alaska fishing in September with a bunch of guys who were in their 60s. One guy's in his 80s, and they were all getting up multiple times during the night. And I, I don't, I didn't get up at all. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, so I'm sure some of the guys have some questions or comments. Do you have any concerns? How about the Gleason score when he was diagnosed and had biopsy? Yeah, uh, well, Dr. Zhao said that it's somewhat irrelevant, but, um, you know, he, he said that it was, uh, I guess, whatever the highest is, a five plus five or something. Um, um, because, I mean, the, the CT scan that I looked at, I, I guess it's a, maybe it's a PET scan, uh, you know, pretty much showed lesions all over all over my body i mean concentrated in my pelvis that's that's what i figured it, it probably was irrelevant it, yeah well, so did they did they actually do a biopsy on yes. how they did yeah and that okay. that was submitted that was useful because that was submitted for a, a genetics um, mutation uh for BRCA one and two which which i don't have which I'm I'm glad for my children that I don't have it, um, and so, immunotherapy uh, was somewhat discounted by my oncologist. It really kind of took too long uh, to know whether it was going to work or not. But I don't know whether he's reconsidering that or not. So let, let me just clarify. You said you said that you got. You're, or you're getting next generation sequencing right now for um, the changes that your cancer that you may have met yourself made. Did you also get a test for inherited back in last March? Uh, well, they they sent in the the tissue sample, and um, the only thing that I heard back from was BRCA one and two. I don't know whether uh, there are any others? He did talk to me about seeing a genetic counselor, but I, I don't have any other input okay. to know. But what what test did they send it in for back then? This was this was in March of twenty. Is that right? Uh, no, he just sent it in in um, I think in April of this year. Uh, the the, okay. the biopsy cores from the previous year. So, okay, but did he send yeah. that in? for a test to see if you have an inherited mutation or did he send that in to see if you have any changes that your cancer has made i i think it, what he sent in in april was looking for i, I think it's it's called the germline inherited correct um, yes and um 
like I said, the only thing I heard back was about BRCA1 and 2 were negative. Okay. Has, he sent, has he sent in a test to see okay. if, your, if your body has made any changes? Not what you inherited, yeah. but if, yeah. has he done that too? Yes, that was, that was what was just sent in last month. Right. Okay. So he, what, so, right. And you would, you would mention that you, you and your wife weren't sure what difference it would make. Well, it, it can make a big difference. Uh, my own cancer uh, mutated to a BRCA mutation. So it's not inherited, but I have a BRCA, and that led to a change in my chemotherapy treatment. So it oh. is very, it's pretty important, and it, it, it might change your treatment, the doctor's treatment strategy. I mean, depending on what whether they find something or not. So that's that's yeah. why. That. Yeah. What he, what he said was that he he just wanted to make sure that we, we he was trying to find options. Right, and, and rightly so. It's on the ball. So so the one thing that I think, um, if it were me, I would be talking to your doc about right now um, is before you you make any significant additional changes to get provenge um because you're you're right in the you're right in the um sweet spot right now for provenge it, it's it's a much better drug than a lot of doctors give it credit um you should be advocating for it yourself and insisting on it because a lot of docs are going to say, well, it doesn't make much difference. We just watched a presentation. Um, I'll let Herb talk more about that presentation because I think it's worth everybody hearing what was on there. Um, but you're right there for it. And and um, and you should, Herb, do you want to talk a little bit about Provenge? I mean, we were all there, or many of us were there. And while, it was done by a company, FLAC. They did present some data which impressed me, which is that uh, the effects of Provenge are significantly extend overall survival in almost every group. But the, the groups that have the biggest effect are number one, people who are just metastatic or, or CRPC with low PSAs. So in other words, their data were broken down by PSA at, at initiation of therapy. And if you had PSA of less than seven, you had a really like a one year difference in overall survival greater. And then the other people who really benefited, and this really was something that we were to push, are black people. That the effect of Provenge in black people is much larger than whites for a reason they don't understand. But it certainly convinced me that it was a useful addition to what we do. Yeah, I, I was on a seminar, an US2 seminar with uh, Orange County folks and uh, Dr. Tanya Dorf. Uh, he was an immunotherapist clinician. Um, uh, she, she told me that, that Provenge was um, uh, b better suited uh, when your PSA is five or less, um, yeah. but that was just in a web. That was just in a you know one of these uh, two uh, so, series. I I haven't talked to Dr. Zhao about it. So so Cal, she's right. The earlier you get it, the better. And frankly, um, it's something Zhao should have brought up as soon as you your PSA rose. If it rose whatever it is i forget is it three times tw or twice three weeks apart what is it herb twice, twice three weeks apart but also radiographic progression is good enough evidence as well yeah but if, if it was rising he should have brought it up and and but it's not too late and i would i would mm -hmm. do do it now but dr dorf is absolutely right is dr zhao a does he specialize in prostate cancer or is he a general? Yeah. He yeah. does. He's a, a PhD MD. So he was involved in PSMA trials. Uh, some, I guess the last one he had, I think four 
or eight patients that were involved in that that trial. Um, uh, what's, his full name? what's his full name? Uh, Song S O N G, Zhao Z H A O. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. But Rick, you know, I'm thinking maybe Cal would be better off with a the next treatment choice to bring his PSA down very low like he had before and then give him uh, Provenge. Uh, I mean, charted would certainly call for him to have had uh, docetaxel right up front. I guess that didn't yeah. happen. No, I mean... He, he yeah. was going to do that last June. Um, yeah. But because of the pandemic, he actually lost two patients um, early on in the pandemic. Yeah. And so that, that kind of changed his mind about um, mm -hmm. starting me on on something that make me a mini, a, you know, compromise. What about well, a NAM? I, I, I don't, that may be his recommendation tomorrow. I don't know. Um, he's not a GU oncologist. I'm sorry? He is not a specialist in GU uh, prostate cancer. Yeah, you know, I, I, my, my gut, the way he's treating you makes me think that. I mean, he may be a really good doctor, but but I'm wondering if he specializes in genitourinary diseases. What What's his specialty, Herb? It says everything under the sun. Yeah. You know, I th this was my gut feel, Cal, and I know it, it, it's sort of a t tough one for you. And, and I also want to tell you, you have an amazing attitude. I'm, I'm, I just have to congratulate you on, on the way you're dealing with this. It's phenomenal. Um, but you've got such good choices of such of some tremendous doctors in your area. And I I kind of feel like um just to let you get to 19, um I I have I would have questions if it were me. And and you might want to be talking to um some of the other docs that are in your area who definitely do specialize in prostate cancer. Yeah. Um, if nothing else, they're going to be more familiar with the trials than Zhao. Zhao will look at the trials, but he's not going to be intimately familiar with them. Um, you know, I, I think that um, I kind of like um, uh, Evan, um, I've just lost his last name. Is it Hugh? What was his? Somebody you, help uh, me. Yeah, huh? I think it's you. Yeah, Evan Hughes. Yeah, Evan you. Evan you. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've heard Evan him speak at one of the, one of the uh, Fred Hutch webinars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I really like him. Schweitzer is a young doc, but he's really good. Pat Martin, you're with Schweitzer, aren't you? Yes, Pat, I am. Come on in. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's good. He takes the time to listen. He's done a lot of research, uh, authored quite a few papers for as young as he is. He's he's good. Um, so, you know, Schweitz is another guy. Um, I just, I mean, we, we, oh no, she's in Portland. That's no good for you. I was thinking of a Portland doc, but that's no good for you. Um, who else do we have in, Oh, I know. Um, Heather, Heather uh, Chang, isn't it? Yes. Heather yeah, Chang. she's great. She's really good too. Yeah, I've, um, I've I've heard her speak on one of the yeah touch uh, webinars also. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I I just think that um, any of those three, and we could come up with a few more. I'm just these were just off the top of my head. I just think you've got to go in, you've got to get a second opinion. If you like them, you've got to be ready to switch to them. But because the best advice that we could give you if, when you leave here today is to switch your care to uh, to a prostate cancer medical oncologist. Really, really, really important. Okay, thank you. Just, just a quick question. Where are those three doctors practicing? Are they all at Fred um, Hutch or at the, the are they at the university or 
so at Virginia Mason. So no, I I always get confused, but because I think they're all at Seattle Cancer Care, but then Seattle Cancer Care is really part of Fred Hutch, and I right. I'm never really sure how they all. How, Pat Martin, help us out here. Can you? I I go there and I don't know who's who. You know, I <laughs> I started out at at Fred Hutch, called them up. They said, yeah, we get you tins right in. And then I turned around. I was there for three or four years. They went over to Seattle Cancer Care, brought the doctor with me. Um, but it's all under the University of Washington Med Center. That's where right. my records are kept. So I, I don't know how it all fits together. Yeah, I think the website clearly shows it's a, that the, the doc, that at least Heather Chang, who, boy, I mean, her credentials are terrific, uh, is affiliated with Seattle Cancer Care, but also the Hutch and UW. Yeah. Well, anyway, anyway, it's a good thing you're in Seattle because you've got, you've got some tremendous care there. So. Yeah, we, we feel lucky. Well, I think it really is time to call up and, and make an appointment with one of them. I think your PSA is climbing. It's something we don't want to see. And um, I think given the options that are available now, you really want somebody who knows their stuff. Okay, thank you. Hey, Cal, just yeah. curious, had you ever had a PSA test before March, 2020? No. Any particular reason why not? Uh, as I mentioned, my my primary care physician and I had discussed it. Um, and uh, based on my father's history of um, uh, what I consider to be a, it, it wasn't a false positive, but he had very aggressive surgeons uh, telling him that he needed to have a, his prostate removed when his PSA uh, was five. Um, so I was gun shy of that and discussed it with my primary care physician. And, um, as it turned out, he has actually, he had actually lost a patient from a false positive also, uh, who had complications from surgery that he didn't believe he actually needed surgery, but he was very careful about what he said. Mm -hmm. Um, Cal, the 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 um, before we we move on, um, I just want to go back to Len's point because it was a very good one, which is the question of when you sequence in the Provenge, mm -hmm. and I think that if you were to go to one of these docs that we mentioned, they would give you good advice as whether you should get it now, whether you should go through some other treatment first and then get it. I think all of them would agree that, you know, like Dorf has said and others have said, and we say it's a good thing to get, but it's a we can't give you medical advice. It's a bit above our pay grade, but we just know that, you know, it's a good thing to get. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring that up tomorrow. I was planning on bringing that up the next time I saw him, but um, uh, like I said, I was I was hoping I mean, I've been getting tested every month, and uh, it it um, it had been seven weeks, um, and I, I I don't know until I talk to him. I'm guessing he was trying to get me into a trial, and wasn't mm -hmm. successful doing that. And if he had changed my treatment, uh, he said that would have invalidated me from a trial. Um, now his practice at Swedish and Seattle is going to have a trial in January, but he told me two months ago that it was too long to wait for that. Um, but now that's kind of just around the corner. So, um, so are you talking about a lutetium trial? Is that what uh, you're specific, uh, thinking about? Yes, I mean, um, uh, yeah. Lutetium. So wow. let, let me just say that, that um, you can't get into a trial if you haven't had chemo right now. Yeah. Um, and so you would have needed to have chemo anyway. So there was no way you could have gotten into a trial. You would have had to have had, I think, at least three or four sessions. We have one guy um, in the group who is who who did get in, 
um, without doing chemo. But since he got in and he's now on his third or fourth round, um, they said they've told him they wouldn't have taken him later on. So you have to get that chemo under your belt uh, one way or the other. Um, as far as the trial is concerned, we've said it, but it's worth repeating every session. Um, they've shut the trials down if your name has not already been submitted. If your name was submitted before November 17th, your number can still come up and you could still start. We've got two guys that I know that are going to be starting this month and next month, but they've already been approved. In terms of it opening up for new men, um, the best we've heard is February, March. Um, not sure what's going on and, you know, don't need to speculate, but right now, lutetium is not going to be an option for you much before then. And, and probably, and at that point, you will have need to have done chemo if it's for the managed access. And if it, if it gets approved, it's probably going to be an approval that um, has prior, that includes prior chemo. It's not sure. We don't know. We haven't seen it, but that's sort of m most of the people in the trials have already done prior chemo. Yeah, that, that was my understanding was that um, the approval would be only for people who had already gone through chemo. But uh, uh, maybe I was wrong on this, but I had also thought that the trial was for people who hadn't gone through chemo. So if I had started chemo or had moved to a different drug besides Abby, uh, that would have um, invalidated me from the trial. But but I have incomplete information on that. Okay, well, I just want to you say something. ask your doctor all these these things tomorrow. And I think all yeah. of us would be curious to see how how they, how it shakes out tomorrow and what your doctors yeah. think. Because I'm sure he'll want to do some kind of change. And, yeah. and uh, I, Herb and and are right about trying to get a, an appointment for a second opinion from a from an expert. Who, I mean, Peter, you, uh, let me say, I don't think and get their, their reading. This is his. He needs a first opinion. This is not a second opinion situation. I'm actually kind of a little surprised that this guy would keep him stringing along in the hopes of, quote, a trial as his PSA continues to rise and not offer him the approved treatment for his condition. And that worries me a bit. And I, you know, where is his interest really? And I would really, Cal, I think it's time to say to your doc, I, I need to go to see a GU oncologist. Thank you. Yeah, I heard, but I, I, that shocked me when I heard when I, what, exactly what you're saying, when I thought he's talking about trials all this time, but he ha I didn't really feel, I mean, not on an, on an expert, of course, but I, when I heard this, I thought, what is this? And you were talking about he's a PhD researcher and he's talking about putting you in trials. And I thought, but he hasn't really gone through the protocols yet, the no. basic protocols. And that was real. And your PSA was started to rise, it started rising rapidly. And there should be rapid action for that specifically. And uh, that's why I was very surprised. And I completely felt I've been sitting here thinking like what Herb is talking about. That you have to see somebody, I think, as soon as possible, a real expert. And let them tell you, OK, you're on the right path in some way or else get you on the right path before the you're you know, you're saying you're going along great. But what happens if something starts to metastasis starts to appear clearly and you haven't done anything yet? It's scary. I don't know why you would want to wait. And, and uh, nothing wrong. I don't know that he has to switch, but I think he has to see somebody right away. Yeah. Right. So look, I, I I do I think Cal's got the message. I don't think we need to um, right. yeah. take it to keep pushing Sorry. pushing it along. Um, and um, yeah, so Cal, please come back to us. Keep us updated. Use us as a sounding board. Um, reach out to us. We're we're here for you. Thank you. Uh, and, Peter, and if any and if any questions come up as a result of your meeting tomorrow, you know, give um, email Rick or one of us, and and just uh, 
bounce it off of us, okay? We we don't just we're not just here on uh on meeting days. We're 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 always thinking about everybody. Okay. So thank we're you. Within Peter, can I get in a question to Cal? I think it's a question that could help others in our group down the line. Uh, if I understood correctly, Cal, you said you were taking prednisone with Abby and you were you had insomnia and then you switched to dexamethasone and the insomnia improved or maybe went away. That's uh, very interesting to me. Uh, and I'm sure anybody who's taking prednisone, I, I wouldn't have imagined that would be the case, but the, did I get that right? Yeah, that, that is right. And as a matter of fact, they came up in the Seattle US2 um, uh, group that, I, that I'm in. They, they recommended that I, I talk to my oncologist about it. And he said um, uh, that he said, well, let's try it. And it, it was wonderful. I mean, I started sleeping immediately. My blood pressure was very high, even medicated, and uh, it dropped down to um, so low that I completely went off of uh, Losartan. Um, my blood pressure is normal now. Uh, I'm sleeping. Uh, when I first went on the dexamethasone, I lost about five pounds, uh, and I went on a wilderness canoe, a five-day wilderness canoe uh, trip with my 31-year-old son, and and I felt I felt fantastic. Um, and then in the subsequent months, I've gained about I don't know between five and ten pounds, which is worrisome because now I'm really having trouble losing that, and it's. I, it, it's not a problem. I just feel uncomfortable. Um, I've always been able to kind of regulate my weight in the past, but, but now I can't. Um, okay. Well, so. stay, act, stay active. Keep active. You know, you what gotta, of you gotta work on that. What are you taking, if you don't mind my asking? I, I'm sorry. Say again. What's the dose you're taking of dexamethasone? Oh, it's just half a milligram. Once a day. Yes. Okay. I mean, dexamethasone is usually much stronger than prednisone. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can tell you that when I was when I was getting radiation, I was on thirty milligrams. Uh, I I definitely felt it. <laughs> um, Interesting. We're going to move on because it's, it's uh, yeah. Thank. Uh, sorry. Sorry to take so much time. We're going to cut it short, but we're going to we're going to move on because there's a lot of guys that have a lot of issues that we want to talk about. So Jim Barnes, you're up. We didn't get to you last week. Hi guys. Yeah, is uh, dexamethasone methasone, is that a typical uh, alternative to prednisone? Because I just started prednisone from uh, uh, insomnia and restlessness. Yeah, I mean it's an accepted alternative to prednisone, and in fact, there are studies that show. Uh, dexamethasone can improve the response from abiraterone. Yeah, I, I guess I would say that when I started taking it, I forgot to mention this, that uh, my PSA had risen to 1.3, I guess, um, and it, it leveled off for two months and didn't increase anymore when I started it. And Cal, what did you say your dose is now? Yeah. It's, so we're we're uh, on Jim Barnes, Pete. We're, we're going with Jim Barnes right now. Okay. Sorry to cut you off. Go ahead, Jim. You know, my my, que my question I had um, was really a logistics question. I'm headed to Florida here for three months. Uh, you know, during during the winter months here, and I'm I'm you know right in, right in the middle of my trip down there. I need an Elgard shot. Um, I can I can fly back home to Pittsburgh and then fly fly back down, which is which is pretty easy, just um, you know time consuming and expensive. Um, but I was just wondering, does it make sense to connect with another GU oncologist or somebody could uh, give me an Elgard shot in while I'm in Florida? Is that practical or um, not practical? Lynn, do you have an answer for that? Uh, yeah, sure. You can get an Elgard shot almost at any oncology practice. What what city will you be in? Uh, Marco Island. Sorry? Marco Island. Marco Island. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, it's way down south, southwest. Uh, whew, I don't know anybody down that way, but yeah, definitely. Um, 
I mean, I'm within a couple hours of Sarasota and, um, you know, and Naples is 20 minutes away. So even a urologist yeah. can give you an allegor shot. Oh, is that right? You have to be an oncologist. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty simple thing. You don't need to love to give it to you. The urologist would love to give it to you. And that's <laughs> your bread. So you could probably find somebody. Good. That, that's good information. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. I hadn't thought of the urologist. Anything else, Jim? That you was it. Okay? Are you doing okay other than that? Yeah, I just switched to the uh, abiraterone and the uh, prednisone, and the abiraterone is uh, much easier to tol tolerate than the enzalutamide was. So it just doesn't seem like, you know, near near is uh, impact on brain fog and uh, um, anxiety and depression as the enzalutamide had given me. So it's been a been a welcome been a welcome change so far. I've been on it uh, eight eight or nine days now with the uh, prednisone, but I've been I've been skipping the prednisone here and there because of uh, some of the anxiety or restlessness side effects of the prednisone. So, but all in all, that's that's good. That's good. I've changed also changed my diet. I learned about the How Not to Die cookbook year and um you know trying to uh trying to follow the the daily dozen uh from dr gregor that he promotes in the uh, how not to die uh, cookbook and his uh, other book uh so just 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 starting out but it's been a couple a couple weeks i've been off meat james what was the, what was the reason they switched you from uh, zytica to abby I was I was complaining about the side effects. I couldn't even take the oh, whole okay. dose. So it wasn't because we were. It wasn't because there was uh, failure with the enzalutamide. My, Your you know, PSA I was, was not that, starting to rise in spite of it. You know, I had complained about the side effects of the enzalutamide and went down to a half a dose of enzalutamide uh, from the 160 milligrams to 80 milligrams. And my PSA just started creeping up a little bit from from 0.1 to 0.2 to 0.3 to 0.4 to 0.5, and mm -hmm. uh, right then he we decided to switch to uh, the abiraterone. Um, and you know he didn't. It wasn't. And I, I, you know, in between my quarterly PSA tests, I go out and get my own PSA test just to monitor it. So I was, you know, trying to keep a close eye on it. But it was creeping up, and then uh, my last consultation with the doc, we decided to switch to the ab the abiraterone. The one thing I would think is that even though you're in Florida, you'd want maybe you'd want to like just get monthly PSA tests while you're down there to keep track of, make sure that uh, it was not just a matter of some other issue. Then and switching helps. Absolutely. I mean, the PSA test, I think it's like 40 bucks or 40 or 50 bucks or something to get the PSA it's, test. Yeah. So it's, uh, for, for me, it's well worth the peace of mind knowing what it is every month. For, for anyone that travels in our group, I mean, it's, there's, no, there's no rules that you only can have one general practitioner. I mean, if you spend time in Florida or I spend time in Minnesota, I mean, I've got a, a separate GP that I can run to and get any kind of test I want. When I'm traveling, so uh, it's it's wise to look around, particularly if you're there for several months with the disease we have, so that you have okay. someone to go to. Maybe you maybe you shouldn't give too many of those prednisones. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't what get do what with too many prednisones. Did I misunderstood you? Did you say you were skipping prednisones here and there? You, that's correct. Bad idea? Very yeah, bad. Yeah, I think so. Very but bad. It's good to know. I'll, I'll hunker down and push through it. Why is it so bad? Because you elaborate. We need to have a certain amount of those uh, cortisol type drugs in our bodies in order to get by 
and you're probably only taking five milligrams each day. I don't know the dose. I don't know the dose off the top of my head. I mean, sometimes they prescribe ten, but if they're only five, and you skip an awful lot of them, then you really hardly have any in your body. It could be risky. I, uh, I think you. If you skip more than half of them, it sounds like too many to skip to me. I'd probably talk to your doc about that. Yeah, well, we need we need some of that stuff. So a, a couple couple of things, Jim. Um, first of all, are you taking it once a day or twice a day? Uh, once a day. So you can be taking it twice a day. And you can be taking five instead of 10 milligrams. So you, he may have you on 10 milligrams once a day, and you could certainly cut that back to five, and you should talk to him about it because a lot of the docs are actually doing that right now. Secondly, Len has just posted in the chat window. And for those of you who haven't been here before, the chat window is the little bubble in the top right hand corner a post that he did a couple of years ago on um, alternatives um, steroid alternatives prednisone versus dexamethasone and dosages and goodness knows what it's worth reading um you know the and the third thing is maybe talk to him from the from cow's experience maybe you do better on dex than than than, than on prednisone but it sounds to me that if you're having issues with the prednisone, um, you should definitely be investigating, know what dose you're getting and, and, and you know, make sure that the dose couldn't just be reduced to five instead of 10. Um, who, who's, who on this call right now is, is, on our, is taking abiraterone? Uh, so that's Jeff, Herb, Pat Martin, anyone else? Mike. Oh, G Mike. Gary Peters, Jim, Mar Jim Marshall, Peter Monaco. Okay, so uh, Cal, so just as a show of hands, put your as many of you as can put your cameras on. Uh, how many are on five milligram? Who's on ten? Who's on ten milligrams first? Who's on ten milligrams? Anybody? Passes. Pat Martin. Pat's on 10. Anyone else on 10 milligrams? Who's on five milligrams? So we see a lot of guys on five, which by the way, isn't how the, the drug was approved back in 2013 or 14. It was approved with 10. And how many, how many of you, well, let me ask, who's taking it once a day? Joe Gallo, Peter Monaco, Jim Marshall, uh, Dennis, Mike, Who's taking it twice a day? Pat is, uh, anyone else on twice a day? So just Pat. So I guess what I'm showing you, Jim, is there's a lot of flexibility in how the medical oncology, the GU medonks dose this. And maybe you need to get better acquainted um, with a different type of dose, and then maybe that'll help you as well. And we've got one guy, we, we've got just Cal on Dex, or is anybody else on Dex here? Just Cal. Uh, Julian, are you, you're on Dex? Yeah, so we've got, that's I, interesting. I take so, Dex time, Rick. But you, do you take Dex with the, with the, with your, but you're not on Abiraterone, are you, no, Jake? No, no, I'm sorry. No, you're right. I take it with a cyclophosphamide. Right. So, um, so that's interesting. So, so, so Dr. E started Julian on Dex rather than on prednisone. That's really interesting to me because we love Dr. E and we think she's a very smart GU medonk. And she just recently put Julian on and she started him on Dex rather than on prednisone. So, so there's, um, I just think there's a lot going on here, and and um, and also read read Len's post. Oh, for sure. He read my post. The, the other factor could be whether you're taking low dose abiraterone or the 
with the with the low fat meal yeah. i'm i'm only taking two and a half milligrams a day with the low dose abiraterone hmm. so yeah yeah are okay. you taking it with the, with the meal jim or are you taking it um before the meal um I, you know i i, I take it at night a couple hours after i've eaten so you know basically on, on an on an empty stomach i've not heard i mean most people take it in the morning right i don't I know it, i take it at night oh you take it at night okay it wouldn't suit me i go to I, I like to snack late at night, so I, 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 I didn't think of it. It actually helped me from stopping to not. Anyway, Jim, it would be worth having a conversation with your doctor, even if you have to do it on the phone or whatever while you're down there, and just kind of bounce this thing around, because you, as you can see, there's a lot of variety. In, in how this oh, yeah. Oh, I love takes. the feedback. This is awesome. This is awesome. Yeah. It's really good feedback. Okay, guys. Uh, Les, tell us what's going on with you. Okay, uh, I, my uh, PSA is continuing to rise, uh, not real rapidly, but it, it had been stable for a long time, uh, either less than 0 0.1 or at, at least at 0.1, but it has been gradually the last uh, two, three months increasing and it's still going up even though i'm still on eligard uh, the last reading was 1.0 uh, i have reported a uh, month or two ago that i was hoping to get into a psma uh, test at the mayo clinic in rochester minnesota and that kind of fell through uh, i couldn't get to either the uh, Medicare or insurance to agree to pay for it and it would cost something like $8,400. So it finally fell by the wayside. So I'm uh, not going to uh, get the PSMA scan as I had reported before. I'm going to go back up to uh, get the uh, uh, C11 choline PET scan, uh, February, middle of February, and that's about it. Well, you know, the, a couple of things, Les. First of all, I, um, with your PSA rising, you're entitled to a pilarify scan. And, and anybody who says you're not, you got to fight them because it's Medicare approved. And well, you, I, you know, I couldn't get it at, uh, this was at the Mayo Clinic. Yeah, but then you've got to go somewhere else to get it. So, you know, you 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 then tell the Mayo that you need a pilarify, they need to refer you or call up your call up your medical oncologist or go to another medical oncologist, call up somebody local, but you can get a pilarify scan. There's no reason to have to go back for a C10 when you what you need right now is a PSMA scan and, and it's approved for you. Yeah, but where, how far or where do I have to go to get it? Well, mm -hmm. you may not have to go far. It's available all over the country now. So you'll you'll call up Pilarify, go to the Lanthius website and uh, or the Pilarify website mm -hmm. and call them up and find out where you have to go. But there's no reason not to be getting it. Uh, I mean, as it is, you you'd, you'd have to go to Rochester to to which is a good distance and i'm sure that there's going to be somebody and they have this this uh, pretty amazing artificial intelligence program so even if it gets read by somebody inexperienced you've got a fairly reliable level of interpretation for your pilarify scan so i mean that that's the first thing i i would say the second thing is with your PSA rising like this, now's the time to get Provenge. You should get some get get that Provenge inside you. We already had the discussion, uh, so we, we won't go over it. But this is a great time to get Provenge, and we know it lengthens life. So 
those are those are two big things and i'll chuck it up to anyone else um who um who has some thoughts for you les okay why is the next level provenge rather than an androgen blocker rick well he can do both at the same time there's no reason ah. why he couldn't do both at the same time Okay. But, you know, the androgen blocker, yes, definitely agreed. But, you know, the problem is that the androgen blocker is what is 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 what most of the docs should will prescribe. And that's probably right there. But nobody thinks about the Provenge and we have to advocate for ourselves to get the Provenge. And it's a good drug. And if we don't ask for it, they don't give it. But it's approved. And, you know, you I should listen to a tape of that lecture you guys heard. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's available. It was it was a it was a lecture for us two group leaders. Okay. And so I don't know if it's available. Does it, Len? Do you know if it, if that if it's available? Yeah, I kind of doubt it since it was restricted to the. Uh, to the group leaders uh i don't know why it didn't make any sense to me but it was and i, I don't recall i don't recall terry saying that they were recording it okay well, they didn't kick me well, out this... yeah because we invited you and you're a group leader you're a group leader you you you're, a, you're you moderate this group this is an us group. group so les you're you're in a sweet spot for a psma scan i would push for that fast and if, if you have to go on an androgen blocker that, that you know that could start lowering your psa which is a good thing too but you want to uh, see if you can find out where the action is before it starts dropping so i would i would start taking some action that was me yeah you know, i okay again i i don't know what um mayo's response is going to be to provenge um I have no idea, but I would be finding a doc, if, if it is negative, I'd be finding a doc who is willing to um, to consider Provenge for you and, and because we, we, we think it makes a difference and it's not a difficult, it's not a difficult treatment. So, so there's two things for you, man. One is, one is that get that Pilarify scan before you start taking any more drugs. And to get the probe, you could get the Provenge before the Pilarify because the Provenge isn't isn't going to impact you if you even if you start. The Provenge is given over a month. It's three treatments, two weeks apart. Doctor, comment on that. I had inquired uh, of Doctor at uh, at Mayo uh, and some time ago about Provenge, and he had. Uh, used it some time ago and he shied away from it so he was uh, a bit negative at the time i asked him about it i'll bring it up again bring it up again it's you know the the reason a lot of docs are negative is because they don't see the result but the the trials that they've done seem to prove out the result evidence-based and, and 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 the docs don't get it they don't understand it it doesn't necessarily reduce your PSA. And that becomes a bit of a problem for these doctors because they want to see that impact, but you shouldn't expect to see necessarily an impact. But we know that it has a very positive impact on overall survival and on radiation, uh, a radiographic progression-free survival. Is, isn't that right, Herb? Absolutely. I mean, that's what at least the data show. And that, and, and it's true, I think a lot of docs don't, are afraid because the PSA is not responsive. It is not something that directly just drops your PSA. Right. Yeah, you're looking at the big picture rather than the small picture and doctors like yeah. to look at the small picture rather than the big one. So. Okay, so you got some, you got okay. some hard class. Let us, let us know next week. Okay what you've done okay okay thank you okay okay jake your turn i know this is difficult but we're, we're all 
we all care about you and we want to, you know, you don't have to go through the whole story, but give us an idea of what, what's up in your life right now. Okay. Uh, thank you, Peter. Um, just so anybody, for people that don't know me, I'm 68. I've been dealing with prostate cancer since 11 and a half years. Um, Gleason 8, um, stage 4, lots of Mets. Uh, in my bones mostly, but who knows, they might be in my lungs or whatever else now. Um, and I've been dealing with it okay um, for years, you know, thanks to Rick and all the other guys on this call. Oh, I need to make a, I need to make a statement. I have not been the poster boy for ANCAN. <laughs> um, I continued to smoke. I never changed my diet and I never exercised. All the things that ANCAN recommends highly and uh, just a word of wisdom for those uh, who are listening. It's, I don't know if it made a difference in my case, but it certainly didn't help. Um, anyway, so I, I've been getting weaker and weaker um, over the last probably six to eight months um, to the point where my wife has to take me to the oncologist in a wheelchair because I'm so unsteady. Uh, I've been able to manipulate around in the house by hanging on to, you know, objects and to the walls and whatever. Um, and I was, I was doing okay, um, all things considered. But then the other night I was in the bathroom, brush my teeth brushing my teeth and I said, oh, I'm gonna, don't ask me why, but I decided I'm gonna bend my knees. Not a deep knee thrust, because that would be exercise. Um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I literally bent my knees an, an inch and I just, boom, collapsed. Um, I didn't I didn't bang my head, I didn't hurt anything, didn't break anything, thank God. Um, but I just collapsed. I couldn't get back up. Um, it's like there was like a dead spot or something that just, just bending my knees that very little bit, just, just, I just lost it. I just didn't have any strength. Um, so we had to call 911 to help get me back into the bed. Um, and that's where I've been for the last seven or eight, nine days. Um, I'm afraid to get up to go to the bathroom. I'm afraid to get up to eat. And I don't have any appetite. I've lost my appetite suddenly. Um, the dexamethasone was helping with that, but now suddenly I don't have an appetite. But I'm I'm so afraid of getting up because my legs are so wobbly and so weak and I'm so unsteady. Um, so I've been being in a bottle and pooping in a diaper and, you know, sorry about to tell you that stuff, but that's <laughs> TMI, I know. Um, so, and I canceled my appointment with my oncologist um, and she is going, at my request, she's going to set me up with hospice. I don't know if I'm eligible, if I'm if I'm at that point where I need hospice or not, but somebody's going to come out and talk to me probably later on this week and give me an assessment. Um, so I don't know. That's, what, are you, that's what, are you, what are you doing for pain meds? Okay. Uh, yeah, I've I've been taking. I've had low level back pain for years, um, and I was taking an oxycodone once a day. I take it at night, and it would help me, you know, sleep. Um, mm -hmm. But lately probably in the last four or five months, um, the pain has been increasing. So I've been taking four or five pain meds, opioids, uh, throughout the day. And it, does, it keeps it, it keeps the net, it keeps the edge off, um, you know, and it, and it keeps the pain under control, but it's, I, I do find out I need it. It wakes me up at night or in the morning. Um, so I take, I've been taking pain, pain meds. Um, and of course that adds to constipation. And that was another thrilling thing. Just, it's just, I hate to share this with you guys. And I had, I was hesitant to even talk about it because I don't want to scare people. But, um, you know, the oxycodone constipated me to the point where I hadn't gone for like seven or eight days. And then I was impacted and I had to kind of just pull it, pull it out literally by hand. And that was a adventure in itself. My poor wife, who thankfully was changed diapers for 40 years as a daycare provider and worked in a Masonic home when she was a teenager. So she's not too averse to that, but it's embarrassing for me. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. I, I probably skipped over a lot of stuff and probably you, maybe you might have questions in your mind. So feel free to ask. Uh, so Jake, when are you talking about home hospice or are you talking about going to a facility? Home hospice. And yeah, if I if I have to go to a hospital, I'm not I'm not going to do that. 
Now, hospice has their own centers, though, so oftentimes. So Jake, I think there's also, what? you know, it may be not so much hospice, but Rick, I don't know, what about just a palliative care specialist who can potentially suggest or help Jake through these? Mm -hmm. Can help Jake to what? I think. I, think, I mean, I think. you know, it just seems to me that you've got, I mean, it, to me, that a lot of your issues are just lack of strength. Yeah. And I wonder if a palliative care person could come along and say, look, here are some things we can do for you. Herb, do you want to say a little more about the difference between hospice and palliative care? Or should I say a little bit? I don't really know to say. I mean, I think Rick may know more than I know. Yeah, my girlfriend was a hospice nurse for 30, 40 years. And the one thing that, I mean, Rick probably knows this better than I, the one thing is that when you go towards hospice, they tend to cut your meds, they cut, to cut your treatments out. But right, you can be right. palliative in order to resolve your issues without cutting your treatment if you want to continue with treatment plans. Right. So that's so, real basic. Um, um, you know what I what I, I my first question to Jake would be: Do you want to continue treatment or not? Because if you want to continue treatment, then yes, I would suggest definitely getting a palliative care doc involved. Um, if you don't want to continue treatment, then um, hospice is the right option, although some hospices will allow you to continue some treatments. Every hospice is different. They all have different policies. Um, so you'd have to discuss with the hospice what they will allow you to do and what they won't allow you to do. But if you want to keep taking the meds and you um, your meds and you still want um, better treatment for your side effects, then the palliative care doc is the right choice. Right, and I and I I am fully aware of the difference between the two. I think this this Pro Medica is the is the outfit that my oncologist is recommending, and I think they do palliative care and hospice. Um, they I think they do both. And as, as somebody some someone will come out and evaluate me probably near the end of this week to decide. Um, as far as going in for like I, I skipped my Lupron shot for example. I'm I was due uh, two weeks ago and I skipped it. Um, because I was so wobbly that day, I was, I called the doctor and said, I don't think I can even stand up to get to the car, to get to the wheelchair. Um, so I stopped, I, I basically stopped that. Um, she still has me on the cyclophosphamide, which I don't know if that's doing any good or not. My PSA was over 800 and who knows what it is by now. Um, I'm sure it's skyrocketed since then. Um. So yeah, I'm not averse to to you know palliative care or hospice. I'm I'm either one. Um, I just don't know if I could get make it to the doctor um, to get the Lupron shots and to, and to get the Zometa shot okay. infusions or whatever. So and I have okay. to get my I have a port that I need to get cleaned periodically. So somebody needs to do that. I don't know. Jake, I'll Jake and Ken. What, what, I just what, hope you're eating browns. Say again, Ken. I just hope you're eating prunes for your constipation issue. Nothing worse than being backed up. Prunes, yeah. yeah. Well, that's well, the, that's that's the I've, I've lost. I, I feel like I've lost some sensation. Um, I knew I had to go. I knew I had the urge to go, but I just was, I was impacted literally for like seven, seven or eight days. Um, that's finally resolved itself and about probably last for another couple of days based on past experience. Um, <clears throat> I've lost my train of thought. Um, Jake, I was going to ask you, are, you know, if you can check with your oncologist, you know, about uh, Orgovix, because that's a daily pill that could be, you know, so that just delivered by the pharmacy. Uh, excellent. Of Excellent point, Joe. I did that didn't even occur to me. I knew about it. I've known about it for months, but I didn't even didn't even think about that. Yeah, I that, that way you you know you you don't have to worry about trying to get out of the house to go get it. Right. 
and there might and there might be some kind of nursing care. I don't know what your insurance is, but you might be able to get someone to come in and flush your port. I mean, that's not rocket science. Um, right. But you, you do have to have a nurse you know, who's qualified in it. You might need some some somebody caring for you that way once you know a couple of times a week or, or whatever. Start asking those questions for sure. Hey, for folks, hey, hoping, hoping that this place, you know, we talk on here about these people that have their own agendas. You know, if the surgeons push a surgery or your, or your radiation guy pushes radiation. Is a hospice guy going to push hospice or is he going to give me other alternatives? And I'm hoping this is a big enough outfit. I haven't had a chance to research them, but I'm hoping that they will be able to give me that advice. Um, and maybe I don't. Maybe I don't need hospice yet. Okay, who are they called? They again, Herb. What's the name of the organization? Pro Medica. Pro Medica. Yeah, they're out of. Uh, there's a number of outfits in the area, but I think uh, one's in Beltsville. Hey, Jake. For constipation, when I had my knee replaced and they gave me opioids, I always hated taking them because you're totally constipated. But they had me take Senna as well as Miralax, both of them, right. and it totally resolve the problem while I was on the opioids. I don't know if it, it was taking both of them, not one or the other, both. Uh, another point, Jake, oh, sorry. Another point, Jake, where, which is something Rick started to talk about, is that hospice, like between from state to state, even from company to company, have such different, like, <laughs> uh, supervisors, parameters, uh, the way they operate. Some of them really like are pushing this, you know, 15 minute visit, don't ask open ended questions. And others come in and sit with you and talk through and really get to understand you. And they can have home care or not have home care. It, it's hard to answer the question you're asking about what hospice is going to do because it's different right. every, not just every state, but sometimes every, you know, county. Yeah, let, it, let us know what they what they say when you when you meet with them later on this week. Sure, okay. we care about you, and this is this is a difficult time. And you're right, it is it is scary because on some level, a lot of us face this kind of uh, this kind of issues down the road, and we've seen other guys, you know, go through this as well. And it's um, certainly not fun. You know, embarrassment is the least of it. So. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm, I'm over the embarrassment. My wife assures me that it's not a big deal. It's a hassle for her because she has her own issues. Um, <laughs> um, my brain is just not working today. Oh, I wanted to say one other thing I wanted to say is I don't know if it's spinal uh, compression that's causing the, the, the weakness in the legs and the unsteadiness and the wobbliness, or did I have a mini stroke? I don't know. Um, because I I'll sit on the edge of the bed. And like I said, I literally have not gotten out of the bed or off the bed for eight days. Literally. Um, my son walked me out to the kitchen or to the dining room last week one day, and that was it. Um, but I'll sit on the edge of the bed and I'll feel like I'm falling backwards. Just, I'm sitting there perfectly still, and I feel like I'm falling backwards, which is an odd sensation in itself. Are you in the bed? at least so you don't get bed sores and stuff well i've got a good good a good mattress yeah I've, i'm 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 okay and i and i still you know i, I move around a little bit from some you know I, I mostly spend my time on my side if you see me on video you know i'm always on my side on my elbow uh, because that's the most comfortable for me um Jake, now so far i haven't had any bed sores is it balance or strength I mean, so for example, if you could grab something, can you pull yourself into a sitting position? Well, yeah, I can, I can, I can do that. Um, but it's when I stand up. It's just even, even hanging on to something, and I do have to hang on to something, because otherwise I'll just fall. Um, I'll right. just collapse. Um, but I think it's a combination of both verb. I think it's balance and weakness. Huh. Well, I think there's a case where somebody could come in if you could get them in and give you some exercises and if you're willing to continue with treatment. There's ways to approach this. Jake, do you think you could handle 
holding on to a walker? Well, I have a walker. <clears throat> and that's how, I, that's how I made it out to the kitchen or to the dining room last week. <laughs> this is hey, this is John. We we oh yeah. Ahead. We we care a lot about you. I mean you're 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 a key player in the organization. And even if you weren't, we still care about you tremendously. I know so that. I, and I, and, and we that can Peter, push a lot my... of ideas at you and this and that and and, a lot, and it's mostly because we care so much. But we're not we're not trying to solve the problem right here. We're just trying to support you as best we can. Right. And I'm thankful that you're keeping in touch and uh, you're you're amazing, amazing guy. You're just putting out. Yeah, I don't think I am. I don't think I. Presentation I'm... last week was was incredible. I mean, most of us don't even have the you know the, the wherewithal to do stuff like that, particularly in a situation like you're in. So we support. <laughs> Here for you. You let us know any way we can we can help you. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Peter. I, I appreciate Hold that. I, I appreciate everything that Ann Can has done for me. I know you guys care. You know, I consider most of you my friends, um, and it means the world to me. If I, I live for these meetings, to be honest. Um, as far as making working on that video, I think that's what you're referring to. The video that I made last yeah. week. Yeah. You know that that was I was feeling good when I was doing that. I mean, comparatively speaking, you know, I still had to hang on to the wall and I still had the wobbliness and whatever. But it's like after that fall in the bathroom, that was kind of like a, you know, like the coup de gras almost. Because um, yeah. time, until until that time, I was feeling good and I had fun making the video. I enjoyed it. Um, you know, I don't know. So anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to hold this up anymore. You. But we're all here for you any way we can be. So thanks, Keep Peter. If if there's a minute, I'd like to say something to Jake. Now, I apologize for bringing this up at the beginning. I just imagine this as a slip and a sprained toe or something like this. I realize now what a big question this is. The way I was trained, this major decision is usually made by a person in their primary care doc who has followed them for years and knows them intimately. This is a decision between continuing treatment and preparing to end your life. Uh, the decision between hospice and not hospice. Um, I'm kind of guessing that this is a situation of severe deconditioning and severe constipation and not a case where prostate cancer is within a few months of ending your life, but I don't really know. Right. Um, if, if, there is, if there is a primary care doc that knows you intimately, this would be a perfect case, according to the way I operate, of having the person make a home visit and spend an hour with you talking over whether this is a case where you want to just let everything go or not, or whether you want to keep living or not. And if you want to keep living, then something has to be done about the very severe deconditioning and and um, and move away from it. And whether you're tired of living this way, of letting things go and how long that will take and supporting you through hospice, if that's what you want to do, it's a really big decision and has to be made, I think, with your wife and hospice and all of us behind you. I mean, that, that's right. just kind of the way I see, see this critical moment in your life. Um, I don't Thank you for really, that, John. And, and, I don't. And you're, and you're right. You know, I, I, I don't want to give up. I mean, I'm, mentally, I'm still pretty sharp with the exceptional episodes of mental fog. Um, but we've all been there, done that. <clears throat> um, you know, but I, I don't want to I don't want to die. I don't want to give up. Um, mm -hmm. But I also don't want to continue taking a bunch of treatments or, or continuing treatments that are just going to make me feel so miserable and so unhappy. You know, it gets to a point when it, when it gets to a point, I guess, is when is enough enough? That's right. exactly the question. Yes. And, and you, I've talked to some of these guys, some of the guys off offline, and they'll hear me say, I don't know. You know, I just don't know. And that's. That's my situation. I just don't know. The 
but there's nothing immediately going on that's about to uh, pull the plug on you. No, yeah. Well, I mean, I can, like I said, I can continue peeing in my pee bottle. Um, <clears throat> and that's an adventure in itself. You know, you, with shrinkage and everything, it's hard to even find a fucking hole. Uh, <laughs> excuse, excuse my language. Um, I've, you... peed, I've peed myself in the bed numerous times already, and then you know, taking a dump is even a, is a new adventure. Um, well, it's all about quality of life. You got to talk to your primary care doc. I hope you have a lovable one that knows you really well and can get him over to your house. Right. Well, but I don't Jake, know if she'll come to my house, but. Jake, there's yeah. something called Stadium Pal. What's it called? Stadium Pal. Which I've never is heard made... of that. Can you, can you put that in the chat box? I'll put it in the chat box. But it's made for people who want who want to sit through long ball games drinking beer. Oh, well, that sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jake. Again, we're we're with you. We're not, we, you know, we're not trying to solve your problems right now, but we, we care about. No, I know you. I know you can't solve my problems. Um, and, I, and but I appreciate the opportunity. I, I was very leery. I, I I notified some of the moderators and a few other guys of the situation, and I was very leery about saying anything because everybody's got is on a different path. Everybody is you know responds differently. And I've gotten a good I've gotten a good run. I think eleven and a half years is a pretty damn good run. Um, you know, but there's going to come a time where it's it's going to come to an end. But by the same token, I didn't want to scare other people because just because it happened to me doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. And I want you all to be aware of that. Well, you know, we follow, love you. Follow the advice of the, uh, the doctors. Follow the advice of the moderators, and do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> When it okay. comes to smoking and diet and exercise and all that stuff. Well, Jake, Thank you you've, very much. you've been uh, you've been a great uh, support to me. I can tell you, and uh, you know, just so I'm thinking about you, and if you want to chat, we'd love love to speak to you anytime. Okay, I I know you. Uh, again, you reached out to me in my time of uh, crisis, and uh, you know, you helped me immensely. And if I could help you, I'm happy to do so any way I can. Thank you, Peter. I know I, I'm aware of that and I appreciate it very, very sincerely. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Sorry, I'm not trying. You got to move on. I'm cutting you off, Jake, but we're not cutting you off, okay? Herb, tell us what's okay. I know something's moving in your world and changing. Tell uh, us what's going on. Well, the, the news is not great. Uh, I had a PSA test. I had regular, I mean, a regular appointment last Tuesday and PSA has instead of steadier it's going up so it went up from 1.5 to 3.1 and along with that I mean some people said well it's just an aberrant number well uh, alkaline phosphatase also went up which is an indicator that something's going on in the bone so it's an alarm and Obviously, it could mean that it, Abby has finally stopped working and we'll have to move on to something else. Uh, the response to this is we're getting rescheduled scans of various types to see what the hell is really going on um, and then make a decision as to what potential treatments are. But the number one on my list right now would be Cipolusol tea or Proven, based on what I think my situation is and um, where I'm going. But you know, I could also get another PSA test in, in two weeks, and it could come back lower. In which case, well, it rethinks all of this. But right now, I'm sort of thinking the worst. So there we are. Anybody have any comments, questions for, for Herb? Herb, I thought you had BRCA2. Am I, I, am I wrong? You're wrong. I do not have. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought. I, I have, a, I don't have any genetic mutations. I do have two uh, somatic mutations, which are not good. 
And one of the things that we will schedule is, I mean, it, it's been on after the scan, they're going to see where we can do a biopsy to see what the hell, if there's something different. But I think they want to do the scans to see where the disease is and then schedule a biopsy. And, you know, Rick has been saying I could do a liquid biopsy and I can, uh, but obviously, but that's certainly something I would, I've asked for. I mean, you're better off with a liquid biopsy than you are with a bone biopsy. If there's soft tissue, that's the best, but second choice liquid, third choice bone. Right. Well, there's no liquid. I mean, the soft tissue is probably gone after the radiation. So, so there we are. I mean, obviously it was a bummer. And then, uh, well, Len, uh, 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 here's, here's what I want to say to you. We know, and you've heard tonight, this is a very long road. And a small increase in your PSA is disappointing, but after two years on abiraterone, it's not surprising because right. we know it doesn't work. And in, in a certain sense, it may not it may not even be a bad thing because, because we know that the people that have done really long time on enzalutamide and abiraterone, um, the disease becomes much harder to treat. So my first thing is it's not it doesn't mean that we're going to lose you tomorrow, next year, or even in the next five years. Secondly, there's things we can do right now, um, but we need more information. And you and I have talked enough, and you're getting too many hurdles thrown in your thrown at you to get the information. So you've got to break through that. And we got to get the right information for you and we got to get it quickly. People telling you, well, we'll do this first and we'll do that first. I don't see, there's no point. We've just got to get, we, you can get a pilarify scan, you can get uh, an immediate liquid biopsy that you'll have back in two weeks. Let's see, maybe you made uh, some sort of a mutation that, 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 that has something suitable for you. Maybe you're even a candidate for some sort of immunotherapy if you've got, uh, um, you know, high um, uh, MSI. We don't know. We we got we got to look. And when these doctors say, well, you know, let's do this and let's do that, they're thinking, they're thinking in terms of five years ago. I mean, the practice has changed, and 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 it's reflected in the NCCN guidelines. The practice has changed. So my advice to you is sweep through these doctors. You know how to manage doctors as well as anybody. And you've got to sweep through them. And, and the same thing we said to Cal, if the doctor's not working with you, go talk to another doctor. But I want yeah. you to think positively, and it's very hard. It's easy for me to say it. I know it, but you've got guys who have done this before, and we're here to encourage you. And you know, hopefully, six months from now, you'll be looking behind, and you'll be your bright, buoyant self talking about sailing in Scotland in October. Anybody who sails in Scotland in October or November has to be out of their mind. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's now he's an avid fisherman, so he's got to he's got to add that to his calendar. Yeah, I've got to go fly fishing. <laughs> right, these were just so great. Like just a couple months ago, month ago, uh, I don't know. It makes me think that you think about taking any kind of like mood elevator, antidepressant, or something because oh, I had a, I had a, I had a personal Sorry. consultation. I had a consultation with my personal psychiatrist, and she thinks I don't need it at this point. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for, you know so much, and I'm just reluctant to even. I mean, suggest. I, no, I appreciate that. And it was, my oncologist said, maybe you need a mood elevator. And the answer is, I talked to the psychiatrist who said, she doesn't think I do. 
Chain psychiatrist. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Better living through what chemistry. You, what, what, what do you think? There, there's a question. Do you think you need a mood elevator? No, I don't. I do not need okay. a mood elevator. What I mostly need is, you know, uh, I mean, I, I think my way of coping with this is I'm throwing myself into work. Herb, you know, I've, I've been on, I look at antidepressants as not as a mood elevator, but as a leveler. Um, right. It keeps you from high, the highs and lows that you tend to get. Um, I've been taking them for years and they, and they do help me. You know, right. I tend to be a depressive person anyway, but they don't, it's not a mood elevator, but it just kind of keeps you on an even keel. Right. Well, I mean, Jake, my, my having taught these taught medical students about these drugs, they do affect your other ability, cognitive abilities. And I need all I got. I, understand I just want to, I just want to commend what Cal Van Z just put in the chat window. I love it. Yes. I love it. I love it. And Cal, why don't you just read it out for everybody in case they didn't see it? Because it's, you should read it, not me. Um, I don't know if I can. I'll read. I'll read it for you, man, because it's it, it it and and it comes through in the way you present yourself. It says, "My counselor taught me the future doesn't exist only now." Fear stands for future events appear real. I choose every day to be grateful that I'm here today. God bless you. I think that is a fantastic, fantastic thing to put in there. And, and we, we, we're, we're, happy, we're very happy having you with us. And when you, with messages like that, we, we hope you're here every time. Um, you know, stay in the present. is. You've heard me say that enough times, and some of you guys are good at doing it. Right. Well, thanks, thanks for your honesty, Herb, and, uh, and candidness, and <laughs> with you. So you'll keep in touch on this one. Yeah. You, you won't hear any more for a few weeks. This is this is not turning into a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year meeting, but it's uh, <laughs> it's what's happening. So. Um, you know, we're all, we're all in this game together. Mike, Mike Phillips, what can you tell us tonight? Well, um, I talked to my doc. Last week it was suggested that I get a PSMA scan. And, and I talked to my doctor about that. And he told me today that if I, if I go get a PSMA scan, it's possible that they will find stuff that will make me ineligible for surgery in in uh, March, like we were talking about doing. And I can't know. I I don't know if I fully understand what that's what he's trying to tell me. Other than if I do it, then uh, I'm gonna have to live with cancer and the medication I have to take to treat it for the rest of my life. So the surgery is a prostatectomy? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I, um, it's not necessarily true. I'll let others talk about it. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it used to be the case that, you know, if they found metastasis beyond the prostate and so forth, uh, you know, they didn't bother with the prostate, but there are, that's, not the, that's not always the thinking anymore. I'll let others comment on that. I mean, I, I, is this the urologist that's telling you this, Mike, or is it a G, GU medical oncologist? He's a urologist. Yeah. So as we told you last week, um, he's probably not the right guy to be treating you. And what is what would be correct is your as a medical oncologist making a recommendation that you get surgery i mean what he's essentially saying to you and um i think is that 
if you have metastatic disease, we're not going to do surgery on you. Well, that's not the case because nowadays they treat the primary oh. gland with either surgery or radiation. Carl Foreman had surgery, Herb had radiation, uh, Ken Anderson had radiation. There's a lot of guys on here on here and if a urologist is telling you that you won't be eligible then he's living in the dark ages because we now will treat men like you now that said what's the right treatment and we had this discussion last week you can always have radiation if he doesn't want to do the urology the, the, he doesn't want to do surgery because he thinks you've got metastatic disease in the sense of do no harm and that was why they wouldn't do it because they said why should we if it's already metastasized why should we do it well what we've learned is that by still treating that primary gland we can we can restrain the disease but you've got to be a sophisticated practitioner to know that and most of these guys on this call are with Janita urinary medical oncologists who understand that. So don't take what the urologist is saying without challenging him, without going to him and saying, but doc, this is what they're doing today. Are you aware of that? The docs don't want to hear that. They don't want to know, they don't want to hear that, but that but that's the case. Yeah. Well, okay. well, you have to challenge your doc. I think you have to see an, a, a GU, another hold, professional. Hold on, Larry. Hold on. Let, yes, let Mike respond first, and let's go yeah, step sure. by step. Sure. Sorry. Well, all I was going to say is we we have we are trying to get things the paperwork together so we go get a second opinion, which is uh, oh next next week. We got it scheduled, but we're having trouble getting the hospital we're seeing now to release the documents but, um, so hopefully and he this guy is the the genital urologist that you're suggesting that you've suggested so wh who is it that you're going to see um kevin courtney. yeah kevin courtney he's uh he's at the ut southwestern in dallas and yeah, somebody he, last week had referred somebody last week had told us that uh Sloan Kettering had referred him to that doctor when he moved to Texas. And he liked I, him. I don't know him. Um, you know, I would say to you from where you are in Norman, Oklahoma, um, it's probably about an equal distance. I'd send you to Luke Nordstrom in, in Omaha, Nebraska. Ooh. Um He's a, he's a really good inter, uh, alternative. I am not that comfortable with UTSW. It's not, it would not be where I would choose to go. Oh. But I, I don't know Courtney. I don't remember that name being raised in this forum, but it could be, it could have been. Yeah. It's um, we don't know who it was, so we don't, we don't know you guys that well to know who it was that said that. I don't think he's on uh, the call. Yeah, I, I, he's not a doc that, that that we know, and I mean, we I don't know. Herb's pretty good at this. Is Courtney a GU med onc uh, at UTSW? Herb, what's it? Courtney? Yeah, what's it? Kevin. 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 Kevin Courtney. Courtney. I mean, you know, we know we know a lot of the docs. Um, there is another guy whose name I forget right now at UTSW. That would not be my choice. I, I'd send you to somebody who we know that we've we've referred to before, and 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 that would probably be Houston. We I know we gave you some names in Houston. I didn't write them down. Okay, I didn't write so them down for Houston. So you know we can give you names in Houston. We can give you names in 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 Omaha, Nebraska. We can give you names in Chicago. Um, I'm trying to think where else we could give you. I think we can give you a name in St. Louis, although that wouldn't be my first choice either. Um, so, um, actually, you know, Kevin Courtney has fabulous academic credentials. Okay. 
he went, I mean, he, he did a, he's got all the right, hits every, all the right buttons. Okay. He is a geontologist. He has incredible training with really okay. top-notch cancer people. So, so, and then we don't know him. That's the problem. You might come back and say he was fabulous, and then we'll start sending people to him. We just yeah. don't know. I him. wish I wrote down the name of the man who was in this group that gave us his name. He's being treated by him. But I'm sort of feeling despair because I don't know if we're going to get these mics. Um, images and everything to this doctor in time. We're, we're so thrilled we called him and we got right in. I mean, okay. December 22nd is only a, a week away. You, you well, know, I got a lot of help getting my documents together. Uh, it was overwhelming for me to work on personally and that uh, was Sloan or Dana Farber, I can't remember. But they had people, staff members who were able advocates or something that were able to help me organize and explain to me how to get all those documents together and help me do even well, maybe they reached out for some so we'll have a nurse navigator that may be who we want yeah, to talk to about getting these for us let, let me just ask you where what is it that you need what is it do, do you have but what is it that you need Well, I, I guess what I need to know is some assurance that what I'm going to go through when I have the prostatectomy is going to solve the problem. Nope. And, and I know it's that's almost, I know that's without a crystal ball, there's no way anybody can tell me that, but I'm, I want as close to that as I can get. Well, yeah, but, but it's not, Mike. I, I mean, we can, tell you, we can tell you right now from your history that it will help to manage the disease, but it's not going to solve the problem. And you know, if somebody has said to you it's going to solve the problem, I, 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 I'm not sure that 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 is the that would be my that would be my response. That I, right. I doubt right. that it's going to solve the problem. Right. At, at our level, Mike, you know, our, our disease at our level is not curable. It's manageable, but not curable. Yeah. And once once you get that into your head. And realize through all the medical advances and what's going on that you can go for a long time and have a good quality of life and manage this disease if you take initiative and see the right people and do the right thing. Expect a, a, a miracle or a cure is a list. So, Mike, I mean, let me add this. I mean, the idea that the doc would say if you had a PSMA PET scan, it might. And it disable you, but it would like prevent surgery. What the result of a PSMA PET scan that might dissuade surgery is that you have disease elsewhere. Right. And therefore, why put yourself through the aggravation? And there are lots of people with lots of side effects of surgery. Why put yourself through that if it isn't really going to make it, if it, if it isn't going to be the right thing to do? If it's not going to, if it's simply just a, a procedure. Yeah, that's, I, I like that suggestion, Herb. Um, I think maybe I'm going to have to look at it that way. You know, and I had radiation, and because even in the presence of metastatic disease, and it's, I, it was totally uneventful. And um, whereas surgery is rarely totally uneventful. Yeah. When somebody goes to a, a, a doctor like hundreds and hundreds of miles away, do you just move there or do you rent a hotel no. for weeks? Well, it's, it depends on the treatment regimen. Remember, they may give you a treatment regimen where it could be a lot of it might be done cooperatively locally with, your co with a local oncologist. Okay, so that if he had radiation, it might be able to be done closer to home than going to Houston every day. Right, I mean, again, it depends on what's available where you are. I don't know what level of radiation oncology is where you are and how close you are, but certainly <laughs> these things can be done cooperatively with somebody, as we always heard, your quarterback doc saying, here's what we need and let's figure out where to get it. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. And and you'd be amazed how many people step up to the plate and help out. I live in Hawaii. When I had, it was my turn to do radiation or surgery, I had friends that gave me places to stay in San Francisco. I parked myself there for three months. You know, I flew across the ocean, stayed there for three months because I wanted to get the best care possible and I didn't think I could do it at home. So uh, there's different ways to play it and you'd be amazed how many people will step forward and support you. Okay. Did you ever get any answer about how to make sure you get your records in time? Weren't you talking about that? Any suggestions, I guess I should say. Yeah. yeah. So I think one thing you can certainly do is go to um, the, the radiation oncology office that did your scans. Is that in Norman or is that back in Texas? It's Oklahoma City. It's in, yeah, it's in Oklahoma City. Okay. So. So, you know, you may have to go to Oklahoma City and pick up a disc from them, pick up a, pick up a DVD from them and you take the DVD. Yeah. You know, so you usually, you, can you just walk in and just wait for them to make copies of those things? Yeah, right. but call them in advance and tell them you need it and can they I, have it ready for you? I can't get them on the phone. It's kind of like they've got that message that goes on and I don't even know if they ever pick up the phone. I was on maybe over an hour today they just they don't answer the phone um well, they walk in and have to make discs for me right away it might, right. You, might I mean, you just I, i've done that can do it. With, okay with the, just just go in there and ask for the office manager and tell the office manager you've driven all the way from norman because nobody picked up the phone but this yeah. is what you have to do you know yeah. i mean yeah. it's i know it's hard sometimes to do this but you have to say, I drove in because you didn't pick up the phone and, and it's we not don't right. Mind doing that. I think okay. if we call her on, I think we get to another level of acceptance of the disease Mike has and understanding that this is going to take some effort on our part to get the best treatment for him, which is just what we want. Um, now, this is nothing going up to Oklahoma City and getting records. Um, I think we're if we can, we're going to keep that appointment on the twenty second. Okay. And I stand, <laughs> I'll stand corrected, and we're delighted that you know we 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 found a good guy that looks like a good guy, and we got somebody going to see it because it adds to our resources. So that well, sounds good. We're grateful that we got on this call because I think <laughs> we've just I think we've been stunned, and we can't stay in the stunned part. We've got to get into some action. Right. Okay, well, keep in, keep in touch with us, okay? We, okay, you know, we will. Thank you very much. As much as we can. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Hey, one, one thing, once you meet your GU oncologist, you do not ever have to see him again. I have actually never seen the one I've had for four years in person. I've seen her on video. She calls me on the phone. We talk a lot. I email her. They don't have to see her as long as she has my test results. Okay, oh, that's, for Jeff, you. that's Jeff. That's your situation. Well, they Pfizer. may be. They no, could probably yeah, but, but 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 it's not always the case. We've got guys who have to go in person still. So we respect how you do it, but you shouldn't. But we can't give that advice. It will very much depend on on how Dr. Courtney handles his appointments. Yeah. But for Jeff, it works. For Jeff, it's true. We don't uh, we don't argue with that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, guys. So uh, I'm gonna let you know. I've got to step out because I've got a uh, a uh, quasi uh, emergency dealing with my granddaughter, picking her up at school and taking her to an appointment. But Len has volunteered to step up to uh, close out the meeting. So Dennis McGuire gave him the list of everybody who wanted to speak uh, from earlier on. So uh, he has everybody's name, Dennis. McGuire, you're up. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, quick update. Uh, so I made progress um, with Novartis over the last few weeks and was able to get Letitium last week. Um, as you can imagine, I'm so thankful I can uh, barely talk about it. Um, you know, when they put the program on suspension, I thought, that was pretty much it. So one treatment down and um, I'm scheduled for two more. Great news. 
Great news. Is Thank this, you. Um, where are you getting it? In Chicago or in Wisconsin? Yeah, University of Chicago. Okay, so what they're going to do is they're just going to give you three supplemental to go with the three that you had before? Yeah, that looks like Rick. Excellent. Uh, and and through Shmulowitz? Well, I think I think the yeah, Shmulowitz as well as the other doctor that I spoke to is Dr. Patniak. Okay. 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 Well. Yes, Dennis. Is that it? Just that update? Yeah, yeah, that that's it. So so Rick, I guess the the gods at Stuart Hall are looking out for me. <laughs> all, all I can say <laughs> all I can say is that um I, I'm assuming you went back through the same um channels that we opened up at Novartis originally. And if you did, um they are great. What what can I say? They're they're really good people, and um, I'm I'm just so thankful. Um, I'll drop Rachel a line and thank her if that's okay by you, Dennis. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I I yeah. honestly can't explain how it happened. Other than I was fortunate, all my documentation was in before they suspended. Great. So happy, for you. really, really, really happy. Yeah. Are they giving you? Uh, they're giving you, I assume, the reduced dose now, the regular yeah, dose, right. and not the, the same dose as the vision trial. Right, 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 right. Fantastic, fantastic. We're really, really happy for you. Yep, I'll do that, uh, Dennis. Thank you, D Dennis. What what is your PSA going in? Going in, and I have a lot of work to do. That's why I'm so happy to be in this. Um, my PSA checked in at 300. Okay, so it, it it's really rocketed in the last in the since since you finished the trial, it's gone up a yeah, heck of a lot. It, it appears to be doubling every four weeks. Okay, well, let's hope okay. this done. We're with you on this one. Well, we'll so be looking for status reports for sure, Dennis. How you do? And yeah, that's really good news, though. Yeah, thanks, Ken. Appreciate it. Um, every six weeks apart, Dennis. Yes. Okay. Jim Ward, we're up to you. Hey, hi, Luke. just a quick question. So I read about a bone strengthening agent mm -hmm. called Ivenity. Uh, it's an osteoporosis drug. Uh, and I get the feeling that it's kind of along the same lines as all the other bone strengtheners. Um, and the little blurb that I read said that it was FDA approved for postmenopausal women at high risk for bone fractures. And I know some of these other uh, bone strengthening agents like Prolia seem to be um, applicable to both men and women. So I was just curious if anybody knew anything about this drug, if if it's actually been used for men uh, and not just women. It's just something I read recently. I've never heard of it. What's the name? Can you put the name of the drug in the chat window, Jim, please? Yeah, and I can... Um, I can do the uh, the generic name as well. So give me just a moment. So the brand name is Infinity, and I'll put the generic name in parentheses. Okay, There's a lot of time. Well, Ramosozumab. So that sounds like it's a. Um, monoclonal antibody like denosumab as opposed to zometa um i don't know anything about it is 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 dr mark still with us this is his area no he's left i don't see him because this is this i'm sure that mark would could tell us something about this drug um len 
I, I would just say that, uh, you know, why would anyone want to experiment on a on a newly approved drug when you have the tried and true denosumab, right. uh, Exgiva? Um, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I was just curious. I mean, I'm doing Prolia myself, and um, they uh, it was it was FDA approved in 2019, and they did. Uh, yeah, I don't know that it's even that they're even promoting it as as something that could potentially be better than Exgiva or Prolia. So it's maybe just another option out there that may well it apparently is restricted to women. So. It was just something I was curious about. I don't want to take up uh, too much time with that question, but I was just curious if anybody knew anything about it. What, what led you to take Prolia? Um, because I don't have bone mets. I think is the reason. The, there is one study that I just caught published in Japan showing that it's a little more effective than denosumab. What about ONJ incidents? Any difference? Well, I'm not sure that I'm just told. Looks like it can only be used for one year for some reason. Guys, I I, I think, you know, given the time, I think we should move on. I mean, I'm not sure it's that profitable a discussion, um, given that we don't even know anybody using it for prostate cancer. Nobody's ever heard of it used for prostate cancer. And, um, you know, I, 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 I don't see the application. It would be off label and I'm not sure I would see the application here um, for us to say, talk to your doc about, uh, Ramosozumab. I agree, Rick. It's, besides, it's a mouthful to try to say that. But uh, right. I thought I'd take a flyer and see if anybody, if anybody was yeah. on it or knew anything about it. So thank you. Well, I can tell you this, Jim. What I heard is that uh, these bone strengthening agents don't really help people who don't have bone nets. So they so they've given it to patients, you know, without bone mets, and it doesn't seem to uh, help prolong the time uh, to metastatic spread. It, I mean, I I guess I'm taking it for a different reason. If if I'm tracking you, I mean, I, I'm taking it because I was diagnosed with osteopenia um, right. based on a density scan. Right. And, right. So that's kind of what triggered it. Right. And, oh, yeah. and, and that's why, and I took Zometa for the same reason as Jim. I was osteo, I was osteoporotic and they put me on long-term hormone therapy and then they advised I should take, uh, I, I should get uh, uh, Zometa, zoledronic acid, but I was getting it less than had I had metastatic disease less frequently. Right, right. And Prolia is half the dose of denosumab, so that sounds like the best solution for you, Jim. Okay, guys. Well, thank you. Thanks for the time to kick it around. Uh, did Peter leave? Yeah. He left. Okay, so I'm taking over here. So, um, we have not heard from Carl in a few weeks. I've been worried about you, Carl. Why don't we go to you? Yeah, that may be warranted. <laughs> um, I'm not feeling too well right now. I'm feeling very tired and sluggish, and I did have an updated treatment today. I'm at week 18 of my clinical trial at Wild Cornell, and I had an infusion my fourth infusion of Keytruda, which is every six weeks. The results today were, were not great of the blood work. Um, PSA continues to rise. Uh, it has risen to a point which for me is the highest that it has ever been at uh, almost 
53 and it was 27 um, about six weeks ago. So it's doubled again. And I'm not really freaking out, uh, although I am concerned. Uh, while I was waiting, uh, I did send a email uh, to, to Gawa. These meetings that I have with the doctor, which maybe most of you or some of you have experiences that they're rushing around from room to room to room. And you know, they're not spending, and they can't, they can't spend much time with, with each patient. So I did send him an email earlier to ask, I said, in light of everything that's happening here, and my next appointment is in six weeks. And I said, between now and six weeks, especially since he's now cut back on my enzalutamide from four pills down to two because I've had some side effects that he wants to see uh, if I do better. And the side effects are I'm having some balance issues. I'm also having a um, rash on my back, on my side, and it's somewhat itchy. So um, he uh, recommended that I see uh, a dermatologist. I, I do go to a dermatologist on a regular basis. I am seeing my, oh, my cholesterol. I don't even remember the last time I checked my cholesterol, but it's kind of high at 243. And uh, I have been on simvastatin for some time. I went off of it, I think, because of a prior trial that I was participating in. So I, in that email, I said to, to Gawa, I said, well, you know, I would like to go back on it. Is that something that would preclude me from the trial or would there be some, some other uh, statin drug that I uh, can use? But I definitely want to go on a statin drug. Um, I have an appointment actually, believe it or not, this sun Sunday with my primary care doctor and we will discuss that. Um, I'm also having pain in my uh, lower rib on my left side and it's like, Nobody's really given me any uh, legitimate answers as to why is that happening. He's just like, okay, he writes it down and it's like, all right, so tell me what, what do you think it is? And uh, so my, also my next appointment with my uh, Dr. Soraya, my oncologist at Rutgers is going to be uh, January 11th, which is a week or two prior to my next appointment with Dr. Tagawar. So I have a couple of people, a couple of doctors that I'm, I'm going to be seeing before that next six week appointment. And uh, I've also requested and Dr. Tagawa did sign off on a script, uh, the Kessler Institute, which opened up a satellite office in my town. Um, interesting enough, I started uh, there uh, the Monday after my cruise, which was, I was on a cruise <laughs> through Sunday two weeks ago, and on Monday was my first appointment with the physical therapist. Um, he happened to take my blood pressure. Blood pressure was quite high, and he said it was 160 over 101, and I said, no, that can't be. He did it again. It was 148 over 92. I said, no, you know, still pretty high. So for that week, I kept every day checking my blood pressure, and it was high that entire week. Went back to the primary care doctor's office, and uh, that Friday, uh, subsequent, and he wasn't overly concerned, but he said, you know, let's follow up. And that's my follow-up appointment this Sunday. My, my blood pressure is back to normal. So did the cruise <laughs> have an effect on, you know, uh, did I go really overboard with uh, food more often than uh, being at home? But I can say that my weight, thank goodness, did not change a week after the cruise. So uh, I don't think it, it, it's uh, really affected that. So, you know, it's um, right now and, and talking, with, <laughs> listening to everybody else here, the, uh, it seems that the, the trend of the discussions are that people are uh, uh, feeling more progression in their disease as I am uh, as well right now. So that's where I'm at. So, so uh, Carl, uh, did suggest uh, what the next therapy would be for you yeah i mean he just he said we we need to wait until the next scans in six weeks and continue on with the enzalutamide 
I wrote him back to, uh, again, we didn't discuss in full. I said, well, can the Keytruda lower PSA? I don't think we ever discussed that, but I put that in the email today. And uh, I also said, well, between now and six weeks from now, is there something that you think is going to turn around my numbers uh, other than waiting for the next scan? So again, I'll, I'll, I'll see what he has to say. And as I said, I will be meeting with my main oncologist prior to that six week appointment. Yeah, but Carl, here's, here's what bothers me. That's four weeks away. Six. I mean, well, no, it's six weeks until you see Tagawa, yeah, well, and four well, weeks until you see what's his Raya. face in Raya. <laughs> now, the other thing is, sooner or later, we're going to have a lutetium approval. And probably you're going to need chemo to get the lutetium. We don't know for sure. We had that discussion already today, but it's highly likely. So if you want to be considered for lutetium, even if it's outside of a trial, then you've got to get the chemo under your belt and sooner rather than later. And 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 this this trial has never headed in the right direction for you ever from the beginning. So my, if it were me, I'd be moving that appointment with um, Soraya up to this sometime this month and huddle with Soraya. What's, what, why wait four weeks before you even see Soraya? Yeah, I, I actually copied Soraya on this email that I sent to Tagawa. So both of them are pretty good with turning around quickly with a response. So um, we'll see how, how soon they they uh, call back. And I will, you know, as you suggested, I'll call Soraya's office also. But I mean, to get a sooner appointment with Soraya, that appointment is is in concert with my next uh, uh, Eligard and Exuva shot. That's why it's uh, January 11th. Yeah, but you need you need to have a discussion before then. Have a discussion on the phone with him. Right, right. You just be him. Right. Yep. Okay. I will Thank reach you out to for uh, okay. updates, Carl. No, you're way over time. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we've got two more to get to. Uh, it was nice to hear from you, uh, Steve Saft. We haven't heard from you in a bit, I think. So go ahead. That is true. Um, the uh, I get my chemotherapy every three weeks, uh, and I'm just to make sure everybody remembers. I'm doing cabazitaxel. Um, this the 16th Thursday will be my fifth treatment, which I am tolerating uh, well. Um, feel you know, most of the time, very good um, and uh, staying fit, uh, although my back hurt last week a little bit, but I think it's because I overdid the elliptical machine and ramped up the resistance. Um, so I'm feeling better about that. But to date, um, there's, you know, there's no real evidence things are going south, but there's no real evidence that things are uh, headed in the right direction either. My PSA, which I chart pretty well, um, went up to, uh, what did it go up to? It went up to 140 on November the 4th uh, and uh, came, well, you know, again, it's all around. I get it done every three weeks. So it went from 128 on the 14th of October to 140 on November the 4th to 129, back down to 129 on the 24th. Um, and, you know, my PSA has been pretty erratic, so I'm not sure what to read into that until I get the results for this week and hopefully the trend will continue. Um, but I guess I'm wondering a little bit of, how long should I look at this thing? Now, I, I will say that I've started to talk to them. There's a clinical trial called Cell Centric, 
which happens to be for the um, mutation P300 that showed up in my original genetic testing from the tissue, uh, which I have started the process of signing up for, or at least I will on uh, Thursday, which doesn't mean I'm committed to doing that. Um, in addition to that, uh, I'm real. I'm. I have a vacation planned uh, for uh, early January. I'm going to Aspen, and I plan to ski. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, it's like one of the things that I mean, I have a we have dear friends that have a house out there, um, and so I'm probably not going to get any. Well, I'm not going to get any scans till I come back. Um, and probably will get scans towards the end of January. Uh, for the moment, uh, my ALP came down from 280 to 230. Um, everything else seems to be just staying copacetic, <laughs> as it were, not going up, not going down. Um, and uh, my history has been, if I'm not making progress, it usually is not long before I start heading south. And so I'm starting to get a little concerned about that and wondering if anybody has any thoughts. Uh, uh, when would be time to start pushing a little bit for uh, more precise data, more precise uh, measurements, labs, scans. Uh, I'm also having a hard time convincing and, and I, I would like to get either the Polarify or some of the more sophisticated scans than the bone scan. But um, my doctor keeps saying that, you know, we don't have anything to compare it to. And we do have, you know, a year's worth of, more than a year's worth of these nuclear bone scans. Um, and uh, I actually heard Rick talk before about, and it also says there's not that many people that have the experience to read the Polarify. But I was interested to hear about the uh, artificial intelligence. Um, so that's a mouthful of stuff. It's kind of late. I mean, is there a session next week? Are we headed to Monday, the holidays. holiday season? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there'll be a session every week. Um, I would say this, that, that first of all, you know, I love it when they say, well, there's nothing to compare it. If you never get a baseline, you'll never have any. Yeah, well, that, you know, we've had that I mean, you know, time. these dogs drive me nuts sometimes. And I think somebody uh, has to I'm say to them, dog, I the baseline. Right. Hello. <laughs> right. So well, I, um, know, I agree with you. Um, so. I, I, you know, I'm either going to push harder or I'll call uh, the oncological radiologist who I happen to love at uh, at P University of Pennsylvania and talk to her about it. Well, actually, I'm going to do that anyway. Now that I've said it out loud and gotten out of my inside brain, I decide, I think I'm just going to do that tomorrow. Yeah, so so th the second thing I want to say is it's not unusual for these chemos to take four or five sessions to really take hold okay and then you see them you, i mean we've seen that we've seen it with other uh, with taxanes in the past that you first of all you go up you get the flare and this and that and then and then they 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 they, they you sort of plateau and then all of a sudden you'll start to see them have the impact so we don't know and it's not unusual and We've got other guys with chemo that can give you the, the benefit of their experience. I think what we're gonna have to do um, only because we've got another meeting coming into this room is who, who is still left? That we've got to we've got to give it's Steve. Still some gonna, Gary, so I'll have more information next week and yeah. I'll be So prepared. I think Steve, Steve I'm and fine. Gary um, will 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 come back next week if there's anybody who snuck into this room and is expecting the MS group. Um, it will be, I, we have to close the room to stop the recording and start a new recording. Okay. And by the way, guys, on the subject of recording, we found out today 258,000 minutes have been listened to this year. 
which is pretty impressive. So thank you to Peter Monaco and to Jake and, and everybody else who helps us with the YouTube. Um, and, and the other thing I did want to say to everybody is please, first of all, there's a number of people on here that have made donations and thank you so much. We're really grateful. But if you haven't opened the year in review, which doesn't include, because it only came in today, our success on YouTube, please open it open that email and see what we've achieved this last year that email will be going out again as well this is the only time we do our fundraiser at the end of the year um and with that said i gotta close the room because we'll be there'll much. be ms people coming in very soon talk to you soon bye-bye okay goodbye everyone